Joined by uh, head coach of the St. John Sea Dogs, Danny Flynn. First of all, congratulations on a great playoff run and of course, uh, culminating uh, really in, in the President's Cup. You've been around a lot of championship teams. How does this one compare to the other championship yeah. teams that you've been a part of? Yeah, it's hard to do a, a real accurate comparison until, until the journey is completed. But I can say that you know, this was this was a really good group of kids that you know, we gathered in August and so we, we, we put together our goals and the goal was to, to try and win the Memorial Cup. And you know the President's Cup would be a, would be a byproduct of that along the way. But you know we, we set our goal and our path and the objective here was to, to try and build a team and, and become a team that could, could challenge for the Memorial Cup. How difficult is it? You guys are very, very deep, very skilled up front and, and throughout the lineup. How important is it creating those roles for players and you know remaining and sticking to those roles throughout the journey? Yeah, I mean it's it's I think it's essential and and uh, you know it's it's important that everybody understands their role. They have to maybe not like their role but accept it. They have to feel that their role is important and and you know for our team to be successful or any team to be successful, we have to take on the roles with the right spirit and. Sometimes you have to sacrifice something individually for the good of the group. And the hardest part of coaching is getting players to allow themselves to be coached. And part of that allowing them to be coached is to, is to convince them that their role is important and, and here's the type of job we need done. And you have to convince them that, that we need you to do this with the right spirit. How important is character and character play a role in that as well? Well, character, I mean everything in terms of winning, you know, and, and uh, you know, the teams, they talk, we talk about teams having good chemistry. Chemistry is based on trust and trust is built on relationships. So no question that this team has been together, the nucleus, for, for a long time. Um, we didn't go out, you know, and make massive changes at Christmas like some other teams do. We, we analyzed our team and, and, and made some moves to, to make us stronger in certain areas. We didn't make a lot of changes last year at the deadline. So as a result, there's a lot of kids here that have been a sea dog for three, four, five years. So there's a great nucleus and, and a great camaraderie with, camaraderie with those kids. They've come in as sea dogs and they're probably going to go out as sea dogs. And you don't often see that in junior hockey. How difficult is it from a coaching perspective, planning for teams that you, you haven't seen uh, throughout the year and how intense you've been there before? How intense is that tournament? in that week of, of games. Yeah, I mean, I'm fortunate this is my sixth time, and I certainly learned a lot from the, from the five previous times, um, whether we won the Memorial Cup or lost in the final or didn't get to the final. But also I had an advantage that I was in college hockey for 10 years, and college hockey is about big tournaments, so I think I was able to learn some things along the way. The preparation is different, no question. The hardest part is for me is for teams to get their edge back. You're so excited and, and, and you're overjoyed at winning the President's Cup. Then you have to press reset and get back to go to a tournament of champions against teams that you don't have built-in rivalries with. So that's part of the challenge of coaching and, and, and what makes it an everyday, everyday challenge. And, but our guys are hungry for more. Um, we're well rested. I think we had a chance to prepare and we're going to go there and do our best. Is it about game planning or just taking care of, of the St. John Sea Dogs and within that room is there some, you know, uh, X's and O's once you get into the uh, the games. Yeah, I mean, there, there's with, with today's technology and the network of people we know in hockey, we have good information on all three teams. And but our focus is only on the first game. Right. You'll be able to watch those other teams firsthand. And but you know, there'll be some some tactical things we have to talk about. You know, but the biggest thing is getting back in the in in the competitive frame of mind and getting back and playing. I, I thought our kids did a great job. That was as well as we played all year in that stretch against Blainville. And they were a tough team, right. but we played great hockey. So to get back to that emotional level and that compete level that we had against Blainville, we can find that and bring that back. I think we can get in the middle of this thing. Joined by Paul Boudelier, uh, defense coach, assistant coach. Is this the best decor that you've ever coached? <laughs> yeah, whenever you win, I guess everybody, everybody wins. And we say that all the time. Uh, you know, I've been a part of some, some great teams over the years, but they always say you sort of win from the back end, and we have a we have a little bit of a preface to that to to, to see that it's important. So we, we think it is, but every other position is the same, and, and every coach, whether it's goaltending or the guys up front, you know, will consider their area to be the most important. So 
So let us all think that and continue to win. <laughs> How difficult was it throughout <clears throat> the season, Paul, to, to spot ice and to share the wealth, so to speak, mm. with a decor that deep? Yeah, not many people know. I think uh, I checked the numbers. Uh, last year we had 16 defensemen dressed for us, and this year 14. Um, Thomas played, I think, 46 games last year, making the World Junior Team, right. which is about two thirds of the season. And this year only played 34, 36, so right. pretty much half. So that that opened up a lot of space. Um, we've got some great players from top to bottom. You know, my my role was simply to to uh, create an environment where it was going to be transparent and fair. Right. And uh, and once the guys knew where we were going and, and how we were going to get there and how they were going to be evaluated um, and helped out, then then uh, nobody really had a problem with ice time. You split Simone Bork and mm -hmm. Thomas Shabbat. Yeah. Is that still possibly game plan? I know you don't want to tip your hat, but splitting those two up, entering the finals in, in the championship series, you know, in the President's Cup final, that yeah. paid dividends. We didn't think there was no way that anybody could think that that series wasn't going to was going to go four. Right. Um, you know, uh, the program that Blainville have and and the guys that I know around the program from Hockey Canada are top notch. So, you know, um, they, it wasn't like they didn't try. Um, <laughs> our guys maybe caught the post and caught a little bit of luck. We, you know, we played very well, I think. Uh, but but overall, um, what we were planning to do was to try to try to divide them up on the road game because we wouldn't get last change. Right. And, and and I think with Simon uh, playing with, with Chase, Chase Stewart, who's really been outstanding all year. I mean, Chase is part of that top four group that's come for us and and, and, and has done, you know, extremely well. He's worked hard and, and uh, you know, he'll, you'll, you'll hear his name somewhere down the road for sure. I'm, I'm confident of that. But I think uh, dividing, dividing uh, Simon and, and Thomas up uh, gives us a bit more coverage, and it also, um, you know, I like, I like, uh, you know, Jacob from the right side at times. Right. Um, you know, probably Jacob will know he gets himself in a little bit of less trouble, <laughs> uh, maybe on his forehand than he does on his backhand. So it forces him, maybe, to go on his forehand more and make some great plays. And 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 Thomas sets the standard there for him that right. that he, uh, you know, he stepped up to. So. Uh, we all win when they're all playing okay, and and, and, and the, it was important that the guys the guys knew they made the changes and and they made them willingly. Gives me great pleasure to be joined by President and General Manager of the St. John Sea Dogs. First of all, Trevor Georgie, congratulations on the President's Cup victory. What did that mean personally to you, hoisting that uh, cup in Blaineville? Uh, it was incredibly special. Anytime you can win a, a championship like the President Cup, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly special. Words can't actually uh, describe uh, the feeling. I almost compared, you know, the night before um, the game, game four, it, uh, it felt like Christmas Eve. Uh, <laughs> throughout the day on game four, my brother was actually in town and he had said, you, you seem like it was like your wedding day that day. I'm not married, but he had <laughs> said it, it seemed like that. And, uh, and then when it actually happens, uh, I'm not sure if there's, I'm not sure what event it, it would be compared to, but it's, it's really, really special, especially with the year that we've had as a team and especially the past uh, you know, 18 months, it uh, was extra special. The adversity that this, this team faced throughout the, uh, the season, maybe dis discuss that and, and how that brings everyone together. Yeah, there's a few, the, um, this is, you know, everyone talks about the accolades from this season. You look at the uh, four players at World Juniors, you look at you know Alex in the top prospects game. Uh, you look at a President Cup, another league title. Now going for the Memorial Cup. Everyone talks about the accolades. This has been a really really tough year. Yeah. Uh, it's been a tough year on the ice. Uh, it's been a tough year off the ice. Um, you know to have since joining the organization uh, two Januarys ago, uh, David D K Kelly, our, our equipment manager, has been told twice that he was not going to come back to work. And uh, I just finished speaking with him today, and uh, he's preparing uh, for his third Memorial Cup visit. Um, Oliver Felixson, with uh, you know battling uh, lymphoma, uh, it came as a complete shock uh, to everyone. And you pull someone like that out of your room, and someone like that out of your lineup, um, 
with something that's life-threatening is, uh, is, is certainly shocking to everyone. There's been another number of other uh, challenges we've had throughout the year, um, uh, but we've, been man we've really managed, and kudos to the team, and kudos to the coaching staff, and the front office staff, and the trainers for keeping, and the players for keeping, keeping uh, the wheels on this, uh, this bus going in the right direction. Um, so it means a whole lot to us. It's uh, especially special. I would say this team also feels that um, uh, they've bonded because of it. Sometimes when there's challenges in life, people fold, they take their ball and go home. Yeah. Um, our team has decided to say, uh, this has made us closer and we can beat anything because uh, you know we've defied the odds in a lot of ways. Defining the odds, of course, championship team, but take us behind the scenes, Trevor, to your championship team, your office staff. They've done a great job here promoting you know game days are, are great maybe just discuss their impact yeah I'd start listing off people but we'd be here <laughs> uh, for, for quite some time there's some excellent excellent people who work for the Sea Dogs organization um, the most important thing our our vision as an organization it's all over our walls is to be the model franchise in the CHL you cannot be the model franchise if you don't have model people uh, we have strong values as an organization you know, in August of last year, we ruled out really clearly what our values are and what type of people we want here to carry our organization to the next level. And, um, and those are the type of people um, you know, that we have and continue to seek out for our organization. So they've done, they've done such an incredible job. Um, and uh, I've spoken to a number of our owners uh, and uh, board members and uh, different folks who've been involved with the organization for a long time. And uh, the common comment that I keep hearing that is really encouraging is they say, um, when I compare the years, uh, I'm having more fun. Yeah. I'm actually enjoying this run, uh, you know, a lot more. Maybe they appreciate it more because they know how tough it is. But they're just having a lot of fun because, and there's a very good energy in the organization, and I'm really proud of my team for that.